are back, folks, here on the Michigan Insider Sports Talk 1050 WTKA online at WTK.com. Sam Webb, Robert Weintraub on the other side. It is fantastic Friday, 12 hours of Michigan football leading up to, first of all, you know, our pregame show, the all new, bigger and better, but like Victor's launch, we do the key bank countdown to kickoff that leads into uh, the network program that you're going to hear Jack Miller, our previous guest. Uh, be one of the hosts of, and then, of course, Toe Meets Leather at noon as Michigan takes on Colorado State. When they do, one of the stalwarts of the defense is the son of our next guest, and his daughter is on the staff. Two Wolverines on game day has to be a re- a, going to be a very proud moment and a surreal experience for our next guest, Mr. Mike Morris Sr. Mike, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great. So, Mike, before we get into talking about your kids, let's talk about you a little bit, man. Let's talk about you a little bit. See, so, you know, what you got to understand about me, because we don't know each other. I've talked to your son before, but you, I hold grudges. I'm one of those guys that remembers when this dude named James McCall took my king's hat in the fifth grade. I can remember these things. I can also remember in 1991 when Florida State came up to the University of Michigan and thwarted my national championship hopes, or so I thought at the time, really took from me what I thought was going to be, it wound up being a special season anyway, but really pour water on my expectations for the year. You were on that team, man. I'm a, I'm a really, I, I'm a really hurt your feelings <laughs> because uh, I got player of the game. That game. <laughs> and, and, what's really, and what's really crazy is that uh, there's a picture in the 1991 Sports Illustrated, uh, me and Hutchison, dad, on a play where Ampley broke uh, for a long run, and and uh, he, him and I were going against each other in that particular play. It is so funny. Man. It's so funny. Man, that's not funny. It's crazy, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy how life, you know, uh, uh, has a full circle. You know, you 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 – are enemies on the field, but lo and behold, your, your kids, your kids are best friends on the same team. Yeah, that was a great, that was a great game, a great team. It was a little closer than the final score. It was fifty-one thirty-one, Florida State. You know, interception return for well, a touchdown. Let you all get a couple touchdowns at the end. You know, the second string was in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Well, it wasn't internet back then, so if, you know, you go back and you try to uh, Google and watch a game. And and I remember uh, we were uh, in the process of Mike being recruited by Michigan. Uh, I said, you know what? Let me Google a Michigan game that we, when we played them. And uh, the only one, that, it, if you Google Florida State Michigan, and you'll see a guy named Steve Gilmer. And there's a footage where I think Anthony breaks one for 60-something yards, and I'm leading on the screen. And uh, we come off on the sideline, and then they uh, have a picture of me. And uh, people say, no, it's not you. Yeah, I had hair back then. <laughs> you know, I don't have hair now. <laughs> a lot hey, too, but, hey uh, bro, that's, that's a lot of us these days, man. That's a lot of us these days. But, I know, I know. But, you know, it's, it's interesting. You're, you, I mean, you're Florida State. You're, you're a seminal through and through. So when, when your son goes through the process, how does that not shape his recruitment? How did you – you know, prevent that from from shaping the outlook of his recruitment. You know, one of the, one of the things uh, when both of them growing up, uh, and Mike being on the sidelines of Florida State games with me uh, when he was four and five years old, and me taking kids uh, to different camps all over uh, the United States, it was um, people would say, "Man, I hope you're as good as your daddy," or uh, "You only got this because of your daddy." Um, and, 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 and I saw Mike change and, and, and I love the man he's become because, uh, he even changed his Twitter when he was in high school and, you know, talked about my own legacy. Mm-hmm. And the last thing we want in life is to be remembered as somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that when he started saying my own legacy and, and I used to tell him, I said, do you better than me? You know, I just love you know, the, the violence of the game, you know, cause as a poor kid, you know, you, you had nothing, to, nothing but your manhood to fight for. And, and, um, and I didn't want to go home. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be let go from any team. 
And you, what's crazy is that Michigan was my first visit in high school. My mom wanted me to go play for Bo Schembechler. Michael Daines was my teammate in high school. Uh, uh, Brown was your quarterback, the lefty. Mm-hmm. He was uh, uh, went to my high school. So um, my mom wanted me to get, my, get out of Miami. And I had committed verbally to the University of Miami. And uh, wanted me to get out of Miami, go as far north as possible, and, and, and so I can have a, a fighting chance in life um, socially, you know. So, um, but you know, of course, if your visits are in January. Never <laughs> saw snow before. <laughs> you know, it, it's 85, 90 on Christmas, and uh, here I am. It's 32 degrees uh, and, and snow everywhere. And I was like, you know, and and uh, being a poor kid. Uh, I said to myself, I said, man, my family will probably come every two years to a game or once a year. And, and I was like, man, it's kind of far. Financially, it, it wouldn't be feasible. So I said, you know what? I, I didn't want to stay in Miami because it was, it was crazy. That, you know, it was a spawn of a uh, uh, start of crack, which, is, which was crazy back then. And then uh, so I said, you know what? I, I got to go, go far away, but close enough to where they can go. I never saw Florida State play a game. Hmm. Didn't know what colors they wore. All I know is uh, Jimmy Johnson and, and Bo Schembechler and Bobby Bowden all in my locker room one day, and my coach saying, you know, each of you all get 10 minutes. <laughs> wow. And uh, never saw. And, the, and how I chose Florida State, people think it's crazy. I never had cable TV or air conditioning. Florida State was building Burt Reynolds football dorm, and they had central air. And I asked, I said, what is central air? I said, well, you can put it on 65, 70, and it stays like that all day. I said, what? <laughs> air conditioning. <laughs> And then and then they threw in free cable. I said cable TV. I said, man, I'm going to Florida State. I didn't know their I did not know their record. I didn't know anything other than Coach Bowden coming to my practice. And and and, and people laugh at it, but you don't know what these kids go through and the decisions that they make. And that's one thing I love about Harbaugh. He's not going to promise you nothing. Mm-hmm. And when the NIL came about, you know, uh, his thing was it's going to be transformational, not transactional. And as a man uh, who never had and had to work for everything, I respect that. And I love that. I love that uh, because, to me, you must, it has to be earned. Because once you start giving, you become dependent. And uh, it has to be earned. So, And, and like I said, and I, and, and when, when Mike chose Michigan, at the end of the day, I told him it, it was his decision. You know, I was captain of the team, and, and my dream was me and him on the 50-yard line. I'm honorary, and he's the current captain, and we both flipping the coin on the 50. Mm-hmm. But it's not about me at the end of the day. Yeah, well, it, there's a lot of you in him, though. I talked to him about it this summer. I said, man, you know, the way the guys look to you on defense, uh, it, they, they listen to your voice. Uh, they definitely appreciate your grind. And he was a star in, in his role. I mean, when you're playing behind Aiden Hutchinson, uh, it, it, that shadow is pretty wide, but there were plays he made last year. We're talking to Mike Morris Sr. here. There were plays that he made last year that I had him talk me through, like when the receiver tried to crack him in the in the Nebraska game and he blew it up and blew up the play, or in the Penn State game oh. where, the, where the receiver was coming across the middle and he blew him up. Oh, and let me tell you something, and that was the play that they wanted to go to to get the first down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was the play on the wide receiver on the little drag. And I was like, oh, my goodness, after the hit, I was like, wow, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so you're, you're feeling him. He's feeling more comfortable standing up. Definitely you hear his voice on that team. And just being around him a bit on that Pure Michigan tour, you could really see how guys are, are flocking to him. So he has that, that leadership position uh, on the defense. And then you look at the, at the staff. And you talk about true groundbreaker uh, to see to see your daughter on staff now. I mean, what what does that feel like? What did that mean to you when you got that word? Uh, you know what? I I, I was uh, super excited. Uh, one, I was like, well, maybe they could be roommates and we could save money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the parent coming out of me about my. <laughs> <laughs> but then also, too, I know they're, they're, they're two separate identities, you know, so I knew that wasn't going to happen. But uh, what I love the most about it, um, um, a lot of people think that 
Harbaugh did a favor or, uh, okay, she might be pretty. Uh, by the end of the day, um, we taught our kids, hey, nothing given. You got to go fight for her. Mm-hmm. And if you ever sat down and talked with her, um, she'll leave, leave an a, a, a everlasting impression uh, because everything she's gotten, she's earned. And people don't really don't know what she turned down to take a chance on a dream and an opportunity. She turned down the WNBA. She turned down, you know, the athletic director of uh, Georgetown uh, approached my wife and I and uh, said, man, we're going to do everything we can to keep this girl here. Because uh, Georgetown, they loved her. They even, they loved her so much. And when the announcement was made, allowed her to finish her master's online to go get a head start and take a chance. And she, two months of, of, being on her own uh, and volunteering uh, 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night at Michigan. Mm-hmm. So they offered her, you know, she was offered the, could be the youngest assistant Division One basketball coach in the country. And then um, had an opportunity to coach uh, at the Washington Wizards D-League in the NBA. But her dream and desire is to, and always, always has been to coach football and we know uh, especially as a woman and you know trying to break into a male dominated uh, profession it's hard it's tough it's challenging Um, you know the nuances of the game the nuances of practice um, the nuances of the language um, uh, it's behind the eight ball but uh, you can ask any coach she opens the building and she closes the building Mm -hmm. Six, seven days a week because that's the, the kind of person she wants. And and what I love about Harbaugh, he ain't giving nothing. She had to earn it. She had an interview like everybody else. And she will impress you if you if you took, you know, five or ten minutes and, and, and as a dad and my wife, uh, we're proud of not only the achievements, uh, because you know, sports is temporary. Mm-hmm. We are more proud of the development of the people they become because that's everlasting. So, so, so tell me this: um, Does does Mike call her Coach Morris or, or Coach Mimi? How, how does that work in the building? Ah, uh, you know what? <laughs> I, we joke about that. Yeah, you got to call the coach. You say I'm not calling the coach. I'm not calling. <laughs> but you know, but but what I love though is that uh, he checks on her, making sure she's good. Because just like anybody else, you start a new job. You know, you you. You got the butterflies in your stomach, you know, the questions you ask yourself, is this really what I want to do? So, you know, I love the fact that they both support one another. Uh, she's the mama uh, of the two, so, you know, and she's on him when, when she sees uh, him not giving his all and stays on him. You know, so, you know, I think both of them are well-grounded. Um, yeah, my, my, yeah, my wife's their best friend, so, you know, at the end of the day, um, I, I just sit back and, and I'm enjoying the development. Well, Mike, you know, we, we started out talking about, you know, me holding grudges, man. You, you, you paid us back big time. You, you paid us back by, by sending your kids to the University of Michigan, man. So I appreciate that. But, this, but, but that was the easy decision. That, because here's the thing, too. I even, because when they were recruiting them and we were holding on, we, you know, we, we had you know, everybody in the country, man. And so I, you know, and I told him, I said, I said, you know what? I said, Dave's like, Dad, they, hey, man, just listen to these Michigan coaches. I said, I'm going to do you one better. And I coached him in high school, so I would see all the coaches come in. So I said, I'll do you one better. I'll, let's go. Let's get on the plane. And I'm going to take you to Michigan and show you why that you shouldn't come. And we did a surprise visit. And it's like dating. You see that cute girl, it's like, wow. And then all of a sudden she opens her mouth and she actually has conversation. You're like, wow. And she's educated. Wow. And it blows you away. I said, but you know, it's a dating process. Everybody's happy. You know, it, it, you, you can't find no flaws. And that's the way it was on that first visit, down to the guy that gives you your sneakers and socks. Mm-hmm. We're just genuinely good people. And I said, this can't be like this seven days a week. It can't be. So we snuck up again. I said, you know what? We're going to catch him uh, with no makeup on. And, and, <laughs> so, and I'd be doggone. It was the same. And I, and then I, and the more and more I, I, I was impressed, you know, just by the, 
one, the organization, uh, to Harbaugh, because Harbaugh even told me, said, Mike, I'm not offering him nothing. And then when Harbaugh found out that he had like a 3.839 GPA in high school, he was like, all right, I'm offering you a scholarship right now. Because it wasn't until he found out about the academics that it was offered. You know, and being in this game 20-some, 30 years, I see the good, the bad, the ugly. I see the legal, the illegal uh, aspects of recruiting. And I love the fact that Harbaugh is not going to waver on the man he is and the man he portrays outside of, uh, uh, of, the, of the business. You know, what you see is what you get. And that, to me, means more than anything because I want my son better. Uh, when he leaves than when he got there. Mm-hmm. No doubt. You know, you can throw a couple of dollars at an athlete. Okay, that's fine. But how many times have we seen the 30-30 special on University of Miami on the era that I would have been a teammate of, of the 80s? Mm-hmm. Money mm-hmm. everywhere. And then a lot of guys broke, uneducated, no no college degrees. You know, so, you know, I was friends with a lot of those guys. So at the end of the day, he's going to be a better man. Uh than he was because at the end of the day, the game is temporary, but it has everlasting uh, effects on your life uh, socially, um, you know, just the, the development of the person and the discipline. Well, Mike, hey, man, we love you now. We don't like Amp Lee. <laughs> we, don't, we don't like <laughs> Casey Weldon and any of those other guys. But you are right, Mike. You are right, man. Hey, hey, man, it's my quarterback and my running back, man. I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like I said, it, you know, it was uh, you know, it, it, it was uh, you all were the uh, the Goliath. Um, you all were bigger, you all were stronger. And I remember playing. We played against Tony Mandrich, Michigan State, and uh, and and you guys. Matter of fact, was crazy. My roommate and I and I, I forget his name. I I got the picture in my office. Um, in the All Star game, my roommate was the defense alignment that I went against the whole game uh, at Michigan. Uh, he was number ni- uh, 60 or number 90. I keep forgetting his, I forget his number. But he was my roommate at the All-Star game. Okay. Okay. I have to go and back. I, and I said, man, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, he was either number 60. I remember he had a hot top fade in the goatee. I remember. And I want to say the assistant athletic director, because I haven't had time. I'm not, I'm not there long enough to actually just hang out and talk and all that, but – uh, I think your assistant athletic, uh, athletic director was the defensive end back then. I want to say he wore number 47. Assistant athletic but I know the media, they took pictures of me and Hutchinson's dad because, uh, and then uh, uh, we all took pictures and stuff like that in the game too. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. All right. Well, Mike, man, we appreciate your time. Uh, I know tomorrow is going to be a fantastic day for you and your family, so congratulations on that. And uh, Man, we, we got to talk again, so this can't be the only time we talk. We got to have some more Mike Morris singing. I hear you, man. Come on. Come on. We can talk about uh, that great victory. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you, know, and, then, and then, you, know, you know what's crazy? Oh, we were angry at, at, at halftime because you had to walk up that long tunnel. And we're tired. <laughs> we we're tired. I mean, man, we're like, man, why don't we have a damn thing ground level? <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> I said, like, who the hell put a damn tunnel on a, in the goddamn thing? <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good day, man. It was a good day. You know, yeah. uh, these kills, and they always say that. Yeah, it does. Uh, kills. It does. Uh, kills. Mike, like I said, this will not be the last time, man. Keep keep us locked into your phone so when we call back, you pick up. I got you, man. Listen, y'all be safe. I'm flying out this afternoon, so I, I'll be at, I'll be up there tonight. All right, thanks a lot. That is Mike Morris Senior. 